Hi, my name is Rebecca Salem and I'm an adoption preparation worker with CPS. I am here to answer some questions for you guys uh, about adoption. So, what makes a great adoptive family? Well, uh, being patient, being kind, uh, open to feedback, and uh, flexible is good. Uh, and all of those qualities are really because it all reinforces the uh, principles that our kids are on their own timelines. Uh, and being able to understand that is really important. They might not be ready to uh, call people mom or dad. They have a long history and a whole life uh, that happened before they looked at an adoptive placement or an adoptive consummation. And being able to understand and respect that is really important. Um, it's gonna take our kids time to feel safe in a forever home. And even if they came into care really early, that doesn't mean that trauma won't impact their development um, now and throughout their life and cropping up at different points in time where it might not be expected. They might have some behaviors that people think are a little bit weird or have a hard time sleeping or talk about themselves negatively. Uh, they're just trying to process what they've been through and their struggles in their life and our really great homes need to be able to understand that and be willing to work with professionals like therapists or caseworkers or case managers or you know other professionals uh, to help support their kids because in the end our great families are our kids advocates and our their strongest advocates and are willing to help other people understand all of those things that I just talked about because some places don't and it's important to help encourage other people to really see and understand our kids uh, but I mean that's I guess that's what I really think of with with our great homes uh, having a sense of humor is really good too uh, I definitely really like homes with like definitely having a good sense of humor is super helpful um, so how does it feel for me as a caseworker whenever a kiddo has been adopted? Um, awesome, I guess is the shortest way to say it. I mean, it's awesome. I love it when I uh, get to see a kid who is adopted and, um, especially because it's something where I know all of the work and all of the growth and all of the love and support that has really gone into getting to a place of permanency and it's it's awesome I mean I cry I cry a lot I mean I cry all the time and if any if anybody's watching this who I've done their adoption I probably cried at it and if I didn't cry at it I cried in my car before it or after it um, <laughs> But uh, also, what is it like when you have kids who have been waiting for an adoptive family for a long time? What do you do? What do you tell them? And how do you cope? So, uh, as far as what I do, I build a long last, I build a relationship with them. I really try to get to know them, to get to know their wants and their needs and their fears. As far as what I tell them, we usually spend a lot of time talking about what they want in a home and um, the importance of not just finding a family that wants them to be with them forever, but really making sure that they also are on the same page because it's not, it's a mutual agreement. Our kids are involved. It's important that they have a home uh, that they want to be in with parents that they want to have and siblings that they want to have and being in a place that they want to be in and really processing through their wants and their needs and their fears with them. Um, as far as how I cope, um, I mean, I have two cats. I'm really surprised they haven't wandered across my kitchen countertop yet, but I do have two cats and that, that really helps me cope. But I would say uh, how I cope with knowing that I have kids who uh, haven't gotten to permanency and they have been in care for a long time is 
I try really hard to notice and encourage the positive connections that they have made and exploring those to really see if those might even be options for them. So I cope in knowing that I hope that in my time with our kids, I can encourage them to build positive connections and grow um, into the best kids and young adults that they can be. So, um, how do you support adoptive families once, or how do you support families once they have adopted as their caseworker? So there's a couple different ways that I read this. Um, I read this in a, as something where there are two different things that we kind of think of as adoption. There's that adoptive placement where we might have gone through the process to make a match and a child is moving into that home for the very, very first time. Or I think of an adoptive consummation, which is that magical day where a judge bangs a gavel and it's all official and the department leaves this child's life. So, and so my answers will be a little bit different. So after an adoptive placement, what I usually do is I am involved for a minimum of six months where I am making uh, monthly visits or uh, possibly more often if it's needed, uh, but helping our kids and our families really process through the new relationship that they have and working through those uh, hiccups and really trying to uh, process this experience with everybody. Uh, I am usually also trying to help uh, build supports, find additional resources, help locate that therapist that's really going to be great um, and be a good match for the child or helping therapists try to do uh, like different services. Like if we need family therapy, helping find a family therapist, um, giving uh, information about uh, trauma and how that will probably be showing up in the behaviors that our kids have. Um, helping build connections with our kids and extended family that they might have uh, that they for relationships that they want and just kind of helping navigate the process over the next six months and making sure that when we do leave at that magical day of adoption consummation that everyone feels safe and secure and supported. So, uh, but my support services look really different for every family because every child and every family is different and everyone has different needs. So uh, there's that. Um, what is the adoptive placement that has been the most impactful for you? So, um, that's really hard because I feel like I have worked so many cases with so many kids and so many families that there are so many cases I think that have left a lasting impact on me. Um, I work uh, and I have, I did an adoptive placement. I did a, my, I did a match, which was really exciting just recently. Um, that took a little bit in order for everything and that's why being flexible is important um but we took some time to iron out a few things but we got to do a match and i got to move him into his adoptive placement uh probably about a month ago and he's been waiting for his forever family for a little while but he's been in care and it was a really beautiful thing to get to uh see that uh, there is, I would say like, it is like just the perfect fit. It, this family has everything that he needs and their personalities are just what he needs and his personality is just what they need and it is, it's a really fun thing. Um, and it was really great to get to see, uh, to get to see that happen. Uh, other, ones that I think were really impactful is I've had a grandmother adopt her grandson and I knew that family for a really long time and it's always wonderful whenever we get to see a, um, a grandparent adoption because uh, it is something where she has to go through the and any 
relative caregiver has to go through the process of becoming a licensed adoptive parent. And a lot of families don't necessarily see that coming. Um, and so taking that uh, time and that extra stuff that you never planned to do with your life uh, as a grandparent or an aunt or an uncle or a neighbor or a teacher um, is, is definitely a hard process. And so it's always really satisfying to me. And there's whenever we get to, whenever we got to consummate uh, and do that placement because it was, it was a long, hard, confusing road. Um, and I was just so lucky to be a part of it in any way and get to have a relationship with both of them. Um, and uh, I had a kinship, uh, a fictive kin home that also, I would say, like touched my heart in the same way because I knew the kids for a while and we were, uh, and it was family friends who had been involved in their life for, I think, basically forever. And the timing was right and the needs were right. And as you know, I, I don't get to talk about too much because of confidentiality, but it was very exciting uh, whenever uh, we got to consummate that adoption because I knew how much um, it meant to the kids and, and they were, uh, older kids, I would say, um, I guess in perspective, but, uh, it was, it was awesome. And, uh, I, I do miss, like, I do miss the family. Like I, I miss all my families after we consummate, uh, like I'm happy, but also I miss getting to see them every month or even more or talking on the phone. So, um, I think that those instances are very impactful. And when I, get to do adoptions, uh, other things that are impactful. Oh, and I get to do an adoption for a sibling group, or I have a sibling that gets to join another sibling and we get to reunite. And that's, that's beautiful. And just, you know, all of those things are great. <laughs> uh, and I guess on that note, there's also the question, and this we get all the time. Um, are families expected to have contact with birth families and how is contact with birth families handled? So that's definitely a case-by-case -case situation. And in regards to siblings, my hope is, is that, and my plan is always to maintain a sibling group, unless we absolutely do not have to, or can't, like we can't keep them together. But um, I do my best to maintain my siblings together. Um, and, but sometimes, uh, kids do end up separated or kids have uh, brothers or sisters that are born later and it is something where we work to and we hope to facilitate relationships uh, between our adoptive families and our kids uh, biological ones whether that means we are uh, providing contact information with everyone's permission, uh, sending letters, uh, maintaining a life book. Um, our kids who still have siblings who are in care, we work to facilitate uh, at least, uh, like we work to facilitate visits, whether that is once a week or every other week or every month. It really depends on our kids and what their needs are and what that relationship looks like with their biological family. Um, every family is different, every adoptive family, every biological family, and uh, working with them to really assess that need and where growth needs to occur is going to be something that's important, not just for the few or several months that I'm involved uh, on the way to adoptive placement or post-adoptive placement, but also for our kids for the rest of their life they might not be ready to have a relationship with their biological family right now. But in a year, in two, in three, if everything's safe and positive and supportive, I say positive, if everything's safe um, and supportive, hopefully that contact can happen because the more supports that our kids can have, the better outcomes that they'll have in life in general uh, and as they grow into adults. So. 
I hope I have answered all of your questions. If you have more, if you let uh, partnerships know, I'm happy to answer more. Um, but I guess I will end on the note of that I look forward to reading tons of home studies for all of the great patient kind families that exist in the world who are totally not perfect. Um, definitely not perfect. Perfection is not expected, but those wonderful, kind, loving patient homes who are really willing to work with us and work with our kids. I look forward to reading home studies. I look forward to even maybe doing placements. Um, and I encourage everyone to be in touch and maintain their communities because you also never know when someone who you might be involved in their life will have the need for a placement. So um, thank you so much and uh, I hope this works. <laughs> Bye.